What's going on, everybody? Brad here, back with another video here on the Jurassic Park Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, we're back for another Let's Talk Jurassic. I feel like it's been it's been a little while since we had some stuff to talk about, some good stuff. Um, and today we've got some interesting news, something we thought we should uh, come to you live with. So we're going to be talking today about um, somebody that's uh, been a big part of the Jurassic franchise, uh, kind of subtly under the surface for a lot of film goers. His name is Lewis Dodgson, and uh, he's a he plays like a, a minuscule role in the first film. Um, but uh, he might be back, guys, for, for a much, uh, hopefully, bigger role here in Jurassic World Dominion. And I am not here by myself, guys. I'm not here by myself talking to myself. I actually have uh, a good friend here. If I can find out where his uh, image is, uh, there it is. Uh, let's bring him in here. This is my buddy, Tom Fishenden. What's going on, dude? Hey man, I am so hyped right now. Like, I feel like we've had no news for a while. It's been quite quiet. Lots to talk about, obviously, the filming being shut down and everything like that. And then now we've just been hit with this bombshell and my mind is honestly exploding. I'm so hyped. Yeah, so um, you want to go ahead and just kind of introduce people as far as like what or where this information came from and everything? Yeah, sure. So this was a joint article on Collider. It was by Jeff Schneider and also Collider Frosty. Um, and basically both of them were able to get a scoop that Campbell mm. Scott has joined Jurassic World Dominion as a key character from Jurassic Park, that character being Lewis Dodgson. Now, they were able to get some additional information, which is in their article, um, and that is that Lewis Dodgson will be the CEO of Biosyn in Jurassic World Dominion. So obviously we are 27 years after the events of Jurassic Park. Dodgson back then, you know, low level guy, kind of trying to steal some technology as he does in the novels. Um, but now clearly something has happened behind the scenes and he has progressed to a high ranking position within Biosyn and is now in that position as we come into Dominion. So very, very exciting. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Uh, would you have expected that type of uh, progression, I guess, for his character? I think I would have. Like, he would have maybe started off lowly and just kind of made his way to the top. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with you. When you see the character in the novel, if they are basing it off of him as he appears in the novel, um, he is very, very ruthless, very cutthroat, very much going to be doing what he can to advance his own position at the cost of others. So I think mm -hmm. that it makes a lot of sense. And I think it'll be interesting to see how they explore that character. Yeah, for sure. I know uh, just to point, you know, everybody again towards uh, your work as well, because it wasn't just them. You you actually wrote up an article <laughs> yourself, too. So toot your own horn. Yeah. Here's an article on JurassicParkPodcast.com. You can actually see uh, Tom has the information in there. We got some pictures for you. Um, so go, you know, check out his information as far as what he's thinking. But you're going to hear it again here anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. So let me know what you think, because I feel like people have different ideas when it comes to this character because you're either yeah. taking it from knowledge of the the novels which are pretty separate from the films um when i'm talking about the films i don't i try not to bring the novels in nearly at all like i really don't um but then when it you know when it comes to the film you have uh barely a role barely anything there right so you kind of have to infer a lot from the books um, you know, talking about Biosyn and his role and what they're trying to do. But speaking directly just from the film, what, what do you what do you think is this guy's intentions? What do you think, you know, from Jurassic Park, what do you think is his idea here with what he's doing? Let's go let's go back and retread some some old conversations we've probably had about Dodgson, but uh it's it's about time to do it again. Yeah. Um so obviously in Jurassic Park he is the person who commissions Nedry to go and steal the embryos. So it's clear right from the start that he wants to steal technology. Um, so obviously, back in the day, international <laughs> genetics had the kind of like most advanced technology possible. Um, and now, you know, as they continue to evolve into Masrani Corporation, they're going to have access to even more technology. So it makes sense that he would have been kind of keeping an eye on what they're doing and potentially trying to steal some of that. Um, so from that kind of standpoint, I imagine he's very much 
back to doing what he did with Nedry, perhaps taking advantage of somebody else's misfortune or perhaps their lack of foresight and then using that to further his own agenda. Yeah, I was just laughing in the middle of you talking because uh, <laughs> I've just seen it <laughs> because uh, Dodgson sent some uh, super chat our way. So thank you so much. I, I I'm sorry. I I actually just you know didn't even adhere to your request of not using your name. So my bad. Somebody <laughs> somebody in the chat uh, forwarded over a super chat. Uh, so thank you so much for that. But yeah. Um, so Dodgson, you know, it like I said, it's such a minuscule role. Um, you know, he's just all his role in that movie is to say that there's people behind the scenes, right, that are trying to influence the outcome of all of this. They want to steal some uh, content from the parks and, uh, you know, give the, they're all they're doing is handing over money. And we've been looking a lot at uh, Dennis Nedry, you know, over the past uh, day or so because of uh, the new toy. So we see that big briefcase that he has in that toy. Right. Uh, but you also see it in the movie and uh, full of money. Right. And he also has the, the uh, can. So, I, you know, the way I'm seeing Dodgson is he's just a guy that wants to um, he wants to kind of destroy Jurassic Park. Now, I know some people might take offense to me saying, like, he kind of wants to take them out. But that's the way I see it. You know, he's not doing it to play nice. He's not doing it to play fair. He's trying to steal what is theirs for his own gain. Um and like I said, there's no there's no outside knowledge uh, other than the books that, that it's about Biosyn or what they're going to do with this stuff. But um, in my mind, when I'm watching that scene, I'm like, OK, they're, they're trying to take it out. Not necessarily the way yeah. that they did in the movie, because the, everything that happened after that, everything that Nedry did was not really by design. Like that wasn't the intent to just no. kill a bunch of people and take out the park that way. The, the intent in my mind was to take out the park years down the road. Once they actually got this stuff working, once yeah. they actually utilized those DNA, uh, you know, pieces that they grabbed. Um, but, you know, essentially the idea is to take out Jurassic Park, right? That's what yeah. I'm thinking. And step in and fill the gap. And it mm. is worth noting. So obviously you say that you don't know that he's from Biosyn right off the bat. Well, look at that briefcase filled with money. You might not know that he's from Biosyn, but from the word go, you know that this is a character who has got serious financial backing and <laughs> yeah. actually a level of financial backing that may rival what Hammond and um, obviously InGen have got behind them. So I think well, yeah. right, kind of right from the go, you know that this is really an antagonist um, yeah. for Hammond. That's, that's definitely... That, sorry, that's definitely the case because, you know, as far as you know, Hammond, uh, you know, has kind of been a cheapskate when it comes to paying his workers and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's not paying uh, Dennis Nedry enough money. So that's why all of this happened. Um, if he took care of him and knew what he was doing, which we obviously know he didn't know what he was doing. But if he did, none of this would have happened. But there still would have probably been some sort of plan to take them out, even despite, you know, Nedry coming through there. Uh, well, sort of coming through. Um, but the plan didn't work, right? So no DNA was brought back to Biosyn. Um, so what do you think? What do you think? What do you think Dodgson's been up to? What do you think Biosyn's been up to? You know, since this plan, do you think they just gave up, or do you think they've been trying a lot of espionage in the meantime? Because a lot of years have gone by. Um, if you if you consider like uh, 1993 to 2015, um, when when Jurassic World actually fell, so. What do you what do you think they've been up to since then? So I reckon that they're going to have been keeping an eye on what InGen have been doing. And I would not be surprised if as part of Dominion, we see some kind of flashback sequence showing loads of different things that they've been doing. Mm -hmm. So I think the mm -hmm. most logical thing that would make sense to me is to have some kind of throwaway sequence or throwaway sentence even in Dominion that acknowledges that there was another mission to Nublar because then bang, just like that, you've recanonized the events of the Telltale Jurassic Park game, which would be quite cool. And then... Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they potentially had some kind of look at what was happening with um, San Diego at the end of The Lost World. It would make sense mm. and that was on television. So maybe Dodgson saw an opportunity there, was perhaps yeah. poking around, um, maybe even went to Jurassic Park San Diego, snuck in to see if he could find anything, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And I... <laughs> I also would not be surprised if so obviously in um 
the evolution of Claire. They describe how people came very close to uncovering the construction of Jurassic World with drones ahead of its reveal. So yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if some of the like drones around Nublar were, um, like Karen Jackson has just said in chat, kind of surveillance tech being mm -hmm. used to keep an eye on what's going on. So yeah. I reckon that what we're probably going to see is this long list of things where he has been keeping a track and looking for an opportunity, potentially even having people at the Lockwood yeah. Manor auction. And then obviously when all of the dinosaurs are now out in the wild, it's now going to be a case of his people going out, rounding them up and collecting them for their own purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I love the idea. And it's kind of um, something we've been talking a lot. I don't know if you've been on the show or not when we discuss these ideas, but I'm always discussing uh, ideas about Dodgson because, uh, you know, since since Jurassic World, even like we were like, is he going to be in this movie? Are they going to go back to those characters? No. Uh, Fallen Kingdom comes around. We're like, is Dodgson going to be in this movie? <laughs> No, no, he's not. Um, and then, of course, Dominion, you know, the talk about that movie is coming out and we're like, is he going to be in this movie? So we've been speculating a lot as far as how, you know, that role could be utilized. And I think uh, like a flashback sequence in the beginning is the perfect way to do that. Um, so, you know, all these movies have like a little prologue, right? Like they all have something that happens before the main action of the movie. Um, so I think that would be great. Like 10, like I think. I think the uh, Fallen Kingdom one was like 10 minutes, right? Like that was around 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, have 10 minutes uh, worth of footage here. Um, showcase that exact thing that you were talking about, the trip back to the island to recover. It. And what I want is for them to actually recover that casing, you know, the Barbasol casing. Um, yeah. back, back in 93, I'm, I'm talking about literally moments after it happened. So I know, you know, everybody's like, well, you can't use the Barbasol can anymore. The, the half-life on the whatever yeah. all that good stuff I, I don't care about that i'm talking about like nedry gets eaten and then somebody comes up and grabs the can because because they knew he would probably fail like they yeah they had to have a backup kind of like the game and everything uh, you know mm, i like that idea but i feel like you'd have to retroactively do something to make it make sense well, so here. have it so that dodgson has like got a tracker in it purely uh -huh. because where oh, it yeah. falls, there's no way otherwise logically that they'd be able to go there and think oh it's going to be buried under the mud at the bottom of the water slide um, literally all they need to do is just like <laughs> have like they just zoom in on a pile of mud and all you hear is just like a beep beep yeah beep. and you're like okay i get it and then they go back, they recover it. But what I want from this moment of, of recovering this DNA, so they, they essentially win. Like, they get it. They, they get everything they wanted out of this, this DNA, but they fail. Like, I want them to fail. So, so that when we flash forward to 2020 or whenever this movie will take place, um, 2021, um, th th now it's like, here's another opportunity. Here is our our. our hope and dreams that we've been waiting for all of these years dinosaurs are loose we can just go grab one or whatever they need to do um that's that's really what i want i, I just want them to be like a bunch of failures over this whole time and maybe yeah. dr Wu's involved with that i don't know maybe he didn't have the right equipment and he's like complaining about you guys didn't give me the right equipment i can't do my job you know just like That'd be he's, a very he's always thing to do. <laughs> yeah he's always whining about that stuff so eventually they bring him back to jurassic world and then that all happens and he goes to lockwood manor so i think he's kind of like a traveling salesman kind of guy he goes from place to place like selling his his uh you know abilities but um that's i love that idea about like um you know flashback into what's been happening and you can showcase that you know he's been frustrated Urgh, i'm mad this didn't work and then flash forward to nearly 30 years later and you're like okay now's our opportunity okay so i'll give you an idea then um and this is something i said to a friend in a message a little while ago so say for example we get that flashback and we start yeah. to see all of their technology. We know that hybrids aren't going to be a part of Jurassic World Dominion, as in living, breathing hybrids aren't going to be a part of it. Colin has already said that. Mm -hmm. Why don't we see some failed hybrids in the lab as well? Because it makes sense if they've got that technology, yeah. especially if they are trying to reverse engineer that as opposed to having it from the ground up, that there would be some kind of hybridization that would happen there. I feel like there needs to be some kind of greater nod to the science that's gone on in the background with that to really make it effective. Um, yeah. So 
I, I feel like we need to really get a feel for the fact that they haven't been successful. Um, so then when we get to this culmination moment, um, it feels it. And I, I'm going to throw something out there. I could easily see this flashback ending with Dodgson getting his hands on the baby in the suit of Ceratops. I think that would be quite a cool way of like hmm. leading into Dominion. That would be pretty cool. That would that would actually be pretty awesome and sad. Because you know it's yeah. just like... It's not going to go well for that baby in the Pseudoceratops if that did happen. Um, you talking about failed experiments and everything like that, it just makes me think of Maisie. And I know we've talked about this a lot, and it's super kind of gruesome and, and creepy to think about. But, like, all of the fa failed attempts, like, because they didn't just get it right 100% of the time. Like, the first chance that they got to create Maisie. Like, that just, it, it creeps me out thinking about all these failed attempts uh, uh, at trying to create human life. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're yeah. if you're showing off dinosaur failed attempts it eventually will like you know maybe that next scene after they steal the nasutoceratops is like Maisie's face in in the snow or you know whatever that sequence is that we saw uh colin's pictures and stuff from um but yeah i don't know what are what are people thinking in the chat um as oh, far as uh comments. um if we go up a little bit um, so a lot of people are liking the ideas of kind of flashbacks and things like that um, and kind of so one thing Karen has said is a full circle inclusion of the character for both the other characters in the overall storyline so I kind of I could see them going full circle and maybe giving um, some kind of closure to Alan, Ellie and Ian like maybe during the course of Dominion they uncover that actually Dodgson was a part of the 93 incident because I think for them, that would add a lot more emotional stake to it if they suddenly realized that all the trauma that, that they went through was essentially caused by this guy. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, that... I think that could be interesting. And I tell you what, I... So we'll get onto it later, because I out of all the things in the Lost World novel, Dodgson's character is the one thing I remember. It really stands out to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I genuinely think if they're going to go completely brutal with Dominion and not hold anything back, that Dodgson may be the character that kills one of the original three. I could Ooh. absolutely see that because it would really fit his MO and yeah. would absolutely make audiences hate him. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That would, uh, <laughs> that would sell it right there. Um, and then, like, even going back to Jurassic Park, you know, you'd watch that intro scene and be like, Oh my God, that's the guy that killed Alan Grant or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like if it's, if it's one of the, the three or, or even, you know, one of the newer ones, I keep asking for, for Chris Pratt to be uh, killed off here. So maybe he does yeah. it. That would be nice. Uh, I want to <laughs> just, just uh, cause we've kind of like talked about the character and stuff a lot, but here we go. I, I just wanted to showcase his, his face. This is the guy, uh, Campbell Scott, <laughs> right? Like we've kind of like, forgot about that uh that there is an actor that's been cast in a role here so uh campbell scott he does he does he look the role to you does he he feel like the right guy uh because you know certainly we cannot utilize the original actor for a very no. good you know uh reason we cannot utilize that guy um so we obviously had to recast the role and uh this guy is certainly older you know he kind of aged up uh, along with all the other you know uh original characters and stuff like that so do you think uh, he is a good choice? I mean, do you do you know anything he's been a part of? Uh, have you seen anything? Do you know much about him? Um, so I'm not familiar with him at all, to be honest with you. But that kind of excites me because I know that he's been attached to a couple of really high caliber projects. And also for me, um, if I go into something without any prior expectations of the character, it's a lot easier for me to immerse myself in their Jurassic character. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of regard, I'm excited for him to be Dodgson for me. And I think like, obviously he doesn't look much like the original actor, but it is very, very hard for you to find somebody who does look like him. And you've got to just appreciate that at this point, the actor has aged anyway. And the character has aged, so it makes a lot of sense for him to be looking very different. And I think that in some ways, because they've waited so long to do this, they can kind of get away with recasting him to a different actor because he is so much older. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm open to it, you know? I mean, I think 
really a lot of the modern films have cast quite a few good actors. Like I thought Rafe Spells or Raph Spells, however you want to say it. Um, <laughs> I say Rafe. Really good as Mills. <laughs> Rafe. We'll go with Rafe. <laughs> Um, I thought he was really good as Mills, so I'm excited to see this guy because they seem to cast some quite good villainous characters. Yeah, I mean, you you you're onto something, of course. I mean, that's kind of what a lot of people are saying. They kind of want somebody that um, you don't know much of his background. Um, you don't know who he is, and, and it seems like a lot of this movie has that kind of actor attached to it. There's, um, I'm gonna blank on all their names, um, but uh, most of the uh, you know other characters that have been cast, I don't know what they're from scott hayes right uh mamudo athi yeah. dewanda wise um there's more i just i'm blanking um but all of those <laughs> people i don't think i've seen anything that any of them have been in um and same goes for this guy but uh did you have anybody in mind because i know and i've been talking about it i i really i really wish bob odenkirk got the got the nod here from you know the pitcher walks out to the mountain he's like hey bob uh, Colin's a pitcher in this uh, scenario. He walks out. He's like, I need Bob Odenkirk. Can you bring him out from the bullpen? Do you know anything about baseball? You don't have baseball over there, do you? Is it is, is it a thing? No. Oh, God. It's cricket over here, mate. <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, I, he's he's an actor that I've always wanted for um, Dodgson. And this this goes back to like to maybe maybe like 2015 or so when we were talking about like recasting Dodgson because we we've done like polls and we've done episodes full episodes and stuff about the characters so that was the one guy that I was like oh that's got to be the guy I know a lot of people were saying like um oh uh Kiefer Sutherland Ed Harris I saw um uh oh some other ones I'm completely forgetting names did you have anybody that you were like I want this guy to be uh Dodgson I no, I I mean, to be honest with you, like, thinking about it, so I would want it to be somebody who can be quite sinister and kind of quite maniacal, because mm-hmm. I think that, especially in the novel, he kind of flips on a dime, and then he suddenly changes into this really villainous character. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. If I was to, like... I mean, in terms of acting caliber, he wouldn't work because he doesn't look enough like him. But somebody with similar mannerisms to Charles Dance would be really good because he can kind of pull off that um, kind of like really sort of calm and coolly collected villain. But at the same time, obviously, he doesn't look anything (laughs) like him. You you just watched you just watched uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. I did. I did. And I I was desperately thinking of an actor's name. I was like, come on, Tom, you can't just say you don't know actors. You're meant to be a fan. (laughs) And I was uh, and I was just watching uh, Last Action Hero the other day, so so we're in good company. We both watched a yeah. movie where he's a villain, uh, and that was awesome seeing him in, in Godzilla: King of the Monsters because I don't he's like another guy where like I saw him back in 1993. This is uh, Jurassic yeah. Park beat Last Action Hero in the box office, um, but yeah, so he he seems maybe a little too old for the role, but um, this guy, I mean, he he looks like he fits the bill, I guess. Uh, I don't like I said, I don't know much about him um i know collider had an image let me just bring it up there's kind of like a little you know devious look he's kind of got like his eyebrow yeah. up and he's like mm, i don't know um i'm gonna take i'm gonna steal a dinosaur and <laughs> try to make my own dinosaurs maybe they'll be real looking dinosaurs with feathers um so maybe that's what his line is that's probably i probably read the script and that's probably what it said yeah so you got it Brad, we yeah. signed NDAs. We weren't meant to leak that way. What are you man. doing? <laughs> sorry, sorry, everybody. Um, actually, I want to go ahead and take a look uh, just as well while we're still on the topic of uh, Campbell Scott here. Um, I brought up – did I bring it up? No, I didn't bring it up. Here it is. Um, I brought up a Wikipedia. Uh, no, that's not Wikipedia. What am I saying? Uh, <laughs> IMDB. Here he is. Uh, Campbell Scott uh let's see what's he known for he is known for i gotta click the thing where it says filmography oh no there it is um let's see do i know he's from soundtrack don't know what that is uh house of cards okay i never never watched okay i watched like maybe one maybe one season of house of cards and then gave up completely but uh looks like he's got 19 uh episodes uh for house of cards um, do you know what looking at that top photo of him as well with um the like red jumper on underneath uh-huh. if you were to shave his beard and his hair and put him in a hat he has a quite 
a similar visual profile to the character in Jurassic Park. Yeah, that I mean, I could is, see it. I could yeah. see it. He, he looks like David Tennant in the other picture over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jurassic uh, World Dominion is going to do the Avengers Endgame literally and become a time-traveling film yeah. with David oh, Tennant. Wait, wait, okay, wait. I take this back. I've seen him. He's He was he was uh, Peter Parker's dad in The Amazing Spider-Man. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, that makes sense. I can see that. I can see that now. All right. All right, I can see it. I don't remember. I, I saw that movie maybe once or twice uh a while ago 2014 uh, oh he was in the first one as well i guess but um yeah i kind of forgot about those movies completely um let's see anything else that i've seen before oh i don't think so none of this looks familiar at all <laughs> hamlet he played hamlet in a tv movie has everybody played hamlet at some point it seems like a lot of people gravitate <laughs> around the kind of theater scene yeah so, I mean, look, this guy has been working forever since uh, 1986. Yeah. He's been acting. So I, I trust it. I don't, don't worry. I trust the pick. It wouldn't have been my, <laughs> it wouldn't have been my first pick. But, um, Are you done being angry now? Literally, guys. No. I message Brad the news. The first message I get back, angry, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not. I'm not over it because, because I've had years you know, sitting here doing this podcast, thinking about Bob Odenkirk being the guy. I'm like, there is nobody else to cast for this role. Nobody else. <laughs> I saw all the options. I saw all the votes come in for, you know, our polls that we did on the show. But I, I've i always had this one guy in mind, and I thought he was perfect for it. But no, so now I got. it's going to take me a while. It's going to take me a while to get over it. But you're not, you're not quite a casting director yet, Brad. What can we say? <laughs> I mean, no. Honestly, I think he's probably – great like he would be great in the role you know they just didn't give him a shot is what i heard i heard he just you know he's just you know colin's like i know that one kid in the community i don't know why i call myself a kid i'm like 30 something uh i know that one kid in the community i guess i'm younger than colin so maybe that's what older people say to i'm really people. putting the age of this chat down eh? <laughs> that's what i say to you i'm like i know this one kid tom wanted uh charles dancy or whatever his name is to be uh you know the guy so no but uh, all right, so what do we, what do we want to talk about now? Um, I guess um, the 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 thought is uh, that we can talk about is what what happens now, right? So we talked a little bit about um, you know how we get there, right? So what is the what is the what is the full plan that we get, we're going to see Dodgson have uh, do here? Before we get into that, I think there is one interesting thing to note. So in Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Um, they obviously retroactively began to build out the universe with the mm. inclusion of Lockwood. Oh. Um, and that was poorly received by a lot of people, I would argue, purely because so? obviously it was retroactive as opposed to being something that was there the whole time. But this now presents an opportunity to go back and explore that more. Because if there is somebody who is looking for a competitor... Wouldn't it make sense for Dodgson to go and talk to Lockwood when he realizes that he's no longer associated with InGen? So I definitely think that in some ways we could perhaps go back and explore more of that story, um, mm. which would be quite interesting. So I don't think we're likely to get the spin-off exploring their early days as much as we want it. So I think that this character could potentially be used as a vessel to explore a little bit more of that. Yeah, you know, one one thought that crossed my mind in flashbacks, but every time I talk about this Dominion, I'm like, this movie's just going to be one long flashback. Like, <laughs> I, I just want like a prequel movie of some sort. But I I, I was talking talking about like um you know maybe getting Lockwood you know to have like a what do you call it, a de aging thing going on yeah. and get him in some sort of old role and maybe even have like an over the shoulder of Hammond or something like that. But you could you can involve. Uh, uh, dodged in here that would be pretty cool too i'd like that i'd like to see maybe maybe there is some sort of connection there it'd be quite interesting i think it would just help to kind of continue to build that out um so in terms of the future i think that obviously this technology is out there now and dodgson absolutely comes in and builds up on the fact that in uh jurassic world fallen kingdom Henry makes the point of saying this technology is out there for them as well. So, obviously, 
Dodgson has, since his inception, always wanted to get his hands on other people's technology. So now he's going to take it and begin to mess with it. Uh And I reckon a part of that will probably be reverse engineering. So I wouldn't be surprised if we pick up with some of the dinosaurs mysteriously going missing. Perhaps park rangers, like at Battle at Big Rock, are keeping track of where they are and suddenly they stop appearing at the locations they've been sighted at and it turns out that this mysterious figure is rounding them up and collecting them for some purpose and that then ends up being um obviously ends up being dodgson now then from that point i don't know where he would take that further um Potentially, you could go down the route of militarizing it and say he's somehow using their genetics to make uh-huh. some kind of weapon. I know it's overstated at this point, but it does make sense. Um, but I, I kind of feel like there's interesting scope there because if you were to go down that route, you could potentially have him in the process of it inadvertently create the DX virus. So then you could tie into the novel more and have it so that wherever this film leaves off, even if there's still some dinosaurs out in the wild, they now have got the DX virus to like kind of conflict with as well. So no, it could no. introduce something new to the world. You know, I was opposed to the whole virus thing even before <laughs> everything that's happened, um, just because of planet of the apes uh it it just felt a little too on the nose with the virus but then we had a global or we still have a global pandemic and i'm like all right can we maybe just stay away from the 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 virus stuff for a little bit like let me just get my mind on something else but who knows i mean it could be uh you know impactful i guess but um i don't know i want to point out something aaron asked uh, and i know mike uh, also commented on it as well, but uh, Aaron asked about flashbacks in Jurassic. Has that ever been a thing? Uh, it, it's happened two times. Um, it happened in that one that Mike pointed out uh, with you know uh, the video footage of Chris Pratt, uh, you mm-hmm. know training the Raptors. But it also happened in Jurassic Park three. Uh, looking, it's only been video flashbacks. Like you're somebody's actually watching a screen flashbacks, so you get to see that. No, not yet. Like when when they're flying over the. Uh, uh you know the island in jurassic park 3 but um you so know... how cool say for example we're going for that through the video medium again uh-huh. how cool would it be if our intro like say for example we pick up um frame for frame on the piece of chaos fear and marketing of the san diego t-rex on the street uh-huh. and then the camera zooms out it cuts to black and white and we realize that that's one of several cameras watching over loads of different incidents that have happened. And that's how Dodgson is introduced back in. Because then you're still using that yeah. kind of physical media format that they've used to transition into that. But it's keeping it like Aaron has literally just said in kind of the modern day. Mm-hmm. I like it, but I also want them to go back even farther. So Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron hates our ideas here. He says it's still not a flashback. Um, Hey, Aaron, it, why, it, why don't it, you... It is. Aaron, take a leaf out of my book. Come on and defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll, I'll be talking with Aaron tomorrow night about all this stuff for the Jurassic Wire. The Jurassic Wire comes out next week. So if you want to hear Aaron's uh, uh, incorrect point of view, uh, you can listen to that next week. <laughs> but we always we always conflict on our ideas for the most part. Um <laughs> But um, I, I would say it's still a flashback, though. <laughs> I would yeah. say it's still a flashback just because you're you're seeing into the past. Um, it's not a flashback in the traditional sense, right, where you're you're actually that is the scene like that is the scene. It, you're seeing it through other people's perspective for the most part. Um, he hates all of this. <laughs> so we're going to have a good time recording tomorrow night. Um but yeah, no, I uh, I like your ideas, man. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. I'm I'm excited to see what he does. Um, uh, I forget what you had even said at this point. Um, <laughs> we, we trashed Aaron too much. I forgot what what you even talked about. Um, one one thing I do really want to talk about is his character in the novel. So generally uh-huh. speaking, my knowledge of the awful uh, of the, the I'm getting ahead of myself here. My brain's going faster than my. Are mouth. you saying the books are awful? Is that what you're trying to say? The books, <laughs> yeah. the novels yeah, yeah, are yeah, awful. Um, they spawned some films, and it all went downhill from there. <laughs> 
Um, no, so <laughs> my knowledge of the books is awful, is what I was oh, trying to say. Oh, okay, all right, I got it. Um, I think I've read The Lost World once, and I've read the uh, <laughs> original Jurassic Park twice, so I need to find time to read them more. I just don't get much yeah. time for reading at the moment. Um, but one thing book? that's always stuck with me from either of the novels is Dodgson's character and in particular in The Lost World, how self-serving and manipulative he is. So um, obviously there's the infamous sequence where he pushes Sarah Harding off of the boat as they're going into Isla Sauna, expecting her to die. Um, thankfully she doesn't, but he does that with the full intention of killing her. And then I'm sure there's a sequence where he drives off without one of the other characters and like leaves them to fend for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. um, so... I really hope that they take that kind of character because obviously you sort of saw it with Mills where he was very money driven and was very um, yeah. kind of focused on his own gain, but he wasn't kind of malicious to the extent that I believe that um, Dodgson could be. So I think it, I'm trying so hard to ignore the chat. <laughs> I think it would be <laughs> interesting. Um to get a villain with that level of maliciousness because I feel like that would really bring the human threat back because obviously up until this point yes there are human stories at play here but the villain it. is always the dinosaurs so you've got the Indoraptor in Fallen Kingdom the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World Spinosaurus in JP3 and so on and so forth so I think it would be really interesting for them to actually yeah. give us genuinely evil villain and I think he fills that spot perfectly Sure. I, I uh, really appreciate that. And I, I, I do want to take it back because I did remember what you had said based off of uh, you just <laughs> talking right now. Um, but you had talked about um, the dinosaurs uh, being, you know, they're, they're, they're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs and they, they yeah. have, you know, all these things tracked and, and they know what's going on. I kind of like that. And I don't think a lot of people are approaching Dominion from that standpoint where things are OK. Like, you know, we, we got a handle on it. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah. I don't feel like a lot of people are approaching things from that standpoint. It's either, you know, oh, well, you know, they would just go all in there and kill them and there would be no dinosaurs. Everything would be gone. Or it's just like, oh, my God, the world, you know, the dinosaurs would be everywhere, blah, blah, blah. They're reproducing. Things are crazy. Um, but yeah. I like the idea that that like, you know, they're just wild animals and everybody's cool with it. Um, and they have a, they keep an eye on them and then they disappear. And that's actually I, I like that a lot. I like all these yeah. dinosaurs disappearing, like you're saying about the Nasutoceratops. It's like after that battle at Big Rock moment, they have an eye on it and they know what's going on, but then yeah. it disappears. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's a lot. like a gradual fade in as well. And that mm -hmm. so I I'm I'm gonna ask you straight out, um, just in front of everyone. Can we talk about the synopsis or is that off the tables? Um, I think it's probably off the table, especially for a live okay. chat. Uh, I don't want to lose too many people here, but um, no, yeah, cool. there there's certain things that I think um, play into you know what what, what we're talking about here. Yeah, definitely. So, um, um, so yeah, I I was gonna say kind of off the back of that. If you oh look hold at on, the Aaron comics... Aaron Aaron does point out that don't the animals have trackers? Because that was like essentially the point of Fallen Kingdom too. Was that yeah. you know they had a tracker on the island. Um, I don't know, you know, how they kind of, uh, you know, retroactively make that usable here, but I guess they could. They could definitely figure that out. It make, uh, yeah, it makes sense. It would all depend on the system they're using. Mm -hmm. um, well, but, but, say... but, well, then, sorry. No, don't say it yet. There would also be a problem with the ones that are born <laughs> in the wild, right? Like, so you have... You have a baby in the Pseudoceratops yeah. who was probably not brought over from Nubar, and uh, you know it, it uh, was born in the wild, and uh, that one doesn't have a tracker. So, problems. Yeah. I mean, it, it would make sense. I, I like how you were just instantly taking what Brad, Brad, yeah, what Brad says, no, what Aaron says, and they're just countering it now. That's what this has become. Um, <laughs> so, as much as I think that they were poorly executed. The motion comics do do quite a bit of world building towards Dominion when you look at them. So if you pay attention to the character of the dad, he works for one of the wildlife departments. And you can see that obviously they are tracking them. And okay, so I give, I, I'll see you later. I'll, I'll see you the, later. <laughs> the, um, so the thing I'm going to say, guys, and I, I will just help this myself now, um, is that. Obviously, towards the end of those motion comics, you see the Blackbird helicopter let the Tyrannosaur go off into the woods. Why would they just let an animal like that go? 
unless they have got some kind of plan in place to track it. And it makes sense because that is the wildlife department that these are going to be the guys who will be keeping an eye on these animals in the wild anyway. So mm. I actually think that we will see them factor in a lot more into Dominion. And I, I remember one of the <laughs> filming pictures as well. Maisie had a jacket on that looked a lot like that logo from the car. Uh -huh. So I would not yeah. be surprised if Minion picks up with that department kind of trying to keep track of everything. I don't trust that department because they went after T-Rex with a box on a helicopter. So <laughs> don't do that. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, I think that could be a, a lead in, a, a tie in, if you will. But I, I don't know. I, I hate to even, and everybody else seems to hate to even bring that up. But <laughs> um, it does make sense. It does make sense that that would kind of tie in. And uh, I like that a lot. And I think, you know, what, whatever Maze is wearing on her arm, it kind of, uh, it does look like a, a I don't know, a team of some sort, or uh, what do you yeah. call it? Just like some sort of uh, patch an for organization. an agency Maybe it's of some Monarch. sort. <laughs> Maybe. I love Monarch, man. I, I think Aaron apparently hates that movie. He doesn't even think it's film, whatever that guy's talking about. Don't, don't pay attention uh, to Aaron. <laughs> but yeah, I... So I think that in that regard, it kind of makes sense that they're going to be this interesting faction kind mm -hmm. of trying to get their hands on the dinosaurs in the post world. But I think what it's important to remember is there is potentially going to be some faction on faction conflict there as well. Because obviously you've got these guys who are going to be trying to get their hands on the technology, but you have people mm -hmm. who want the dinosaurs for other applications as well. Like yeah. the Russian guy in the auction room scene, we know that he got at least one carnivore, so that is going to be on its way to a different location. Yeah. You've got other buyers in there who are buying things for different purposes. So I would not be surprised if Biosyn is the crux of the story and they're the main rival genetics firm, but we'll probably see some other things cropping up as well. And I, I could even see it being done so... Again, Aaron, you're going to hate me, but I'm going to make a parallel to King of the Monsters here. At the very <laughs> end, um, they tell a lot of stories very quickly through newspaper clippings where they basically show loads of different things happening. Mm -hmm. So I could easily see a sequence like that where we have got loads of different genetics firms making different animals. I just think it makes sense that if this technology is out there, why would you limit it to just Biosyn? Like, yes, they can be the main yeah. antagonist, but have other things there as well. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know that they'll be the only ones. I think there will be a lot of people out there uh, attempting it. And I know, you know, we talked about it a little bit before, but the uh, I jokingly talked about it, I guess. But the the real look, the real field dinosaurs with the feathers and all that stuff. But you even mentioned stuff about like failed hybrids and stuff. So I think maybe if Biosyn's the one with the, the feathers and then all these other companies out there around the world are the failed experiments. I want it to be like the Lego, one of the Lego Jurassic things had like that it was like a dilophosaurus with like it's the massive head down here head. like it's like weird and and yeah there was a massive yeah. t-rex head and one like yeah i want i want stuff like that <laughs> like some real botched attempts um <laughs> but uh yeah i think uh i think that's i think that's a good way to go you talked a little bit before about um dodgson being evil and whatnot yep. um yeah i uh i know i kind of I kind of struggle with villains too in this. And I know a lot of people do because, you know, people just want them to be people, not necessarily like evil villains, but um, I don't know that anybody's been too, too evil um, outside of Mills. He, he was kind of the first evil guy, right? Like if you want to consider maybe Dr. Wu, he could be there if there's a, a huge plan under all of this. And, and maybe if you, you know, include Biosyn in this, maybe there could be a huge plan uh, with Dr. Wu, but uh, we don't really have any official okay, confirmation, so but. One, one thing I'll jump in with, okay. um, because it's something that dawned on me at the very start of this stream. We still don't have a hundred percent confirmation that Hoskins was working for Mills. So no. obviously he gets that phone call. We don't know that that's Mills and equally we don't know that he hasn't stop, tap, stop tapping your fingers. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I didn't even realize I was doing that. We don't know that something else hasn't happened between Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It's made him end uh -huh. up with Lockwood because he was essentially on the run at the end of Jurassic World. You know, he had yeah. been discredited. He'd had his title removed. So it may have been that 
they got him to the offshore facility, but then something else happened. You know, there is space there to potentially explore things. So I'm interested to see just how much they choose to do different things with it. Because I think that there's... I always say I don't like retroactive storytelling, but I think within the Jurassic World kind of trilogy, there's a lot of scope for things to have still happened between the films where they've been smart and kind of left them quite far apart, just like the originals, mm-hmm. to be honest, with um, the yeah. time difference between the first three films. So I'm interested to see if there's anything else there, because we still we do not have a definitive answer for that phone call to this day as to who that was and who was setting that up and why. No. Yeah, I kind of like to agree to think that all these people are all working together um, yeah. because it seems to be the same application, you know, the same, same thought process, you know, Hoskins is saying, you know, we're going to militarize these things and, you know, run them straight into the cave, eat the people belt buckle and all or whatever. Um, and then you have the, obviously the militarization of the Indoraptor uh, with that laser pointer on the gun. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, and then, you know how is that? How does that utilized here? I and you mentioned it earlier. I think it is probably utilized here, um, in some sense. I don't think they just abandon the idea. I, I can't imagine they just abandon it. Um, apparently, we're getting you know hybrids just abandoned, but that's that's okay. It's kind of a little different, I think. But the, the abandonment of like a militarized dinosaur project, it seems a little like it would just be a shortfall, and and they wouldn't explain things. I, I kind of want a little bit more explanation, you know, talk, talk about Hoskins being co- connected to Wu and to Mills and also to, you know, people in Jurassic world live tour. That would never happen. They would never say that, but I would want that to happen. <laughs> um, so oh, stuff God. like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you're going to connect things to the, the uh, motion comic, I connect things to Jurassic world live tour. So, Oh, we but, had somebody ask about the woman who called Clara at the beginning of Fallen Kingdom, Councilwoman Delgato. Um, uh-huh. I think that that was kind of just done as a part of a wider sequence to set up the fact that they're trying to get support, but they haven't been able to. Um, but it is something that they could call back to again. Yeah, you know, you could have a nod to it. Um, I, I'm just very interested because <laughs> it seems like we've got all of these guys making dinosaurs why why are they not connected there would be more overlap there it just doesn't quite make sense yeah. to me you know it's it's not technology it's widely out there there's very few people that can do it at this point up until the end of fallen kingdom so surely there has to be some kind of overlap there and yeah i, th- I think it's interesting because like you say we don't know um what Wu has done in between different things so he could have mm-hmm. worked for other people because i know that in the timeline he's part of the new blood cleanup but isn't that i i want to say 97 like there's a big gap of time between jurassic park and then the new blood cleanup starting and i just tapped my fingers again um, <laughs> but there is there is like scope there again to do something so i think there's if you were to really sit down and think about it you could think about a concrete way to connect these things and to have some kind of connected purpose across the board that would make a lot more sense yeah um and i think clearly you know dodgson is in the first jurassic park he's now in the sick film so there's gonna have to be some kind of connective tissue behind the scenes there it brings him back into the limelight and I think it just all depends on whether they do it at surface level and say, yeah, he still wanted this technology, that's it. Or whether they actually choose to get very creative with it and try and immerse it more in the law that's been built up to this point. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm totally good with uh, retroactively saying stuff as long as it all makes sense. Um, yeah. But yeah, and, and uh, just to point out a few comments here, um, Eric asked, will Lex and Tim return? Um, and Mike said that he's confirmed, but you know, he's not confirmed. Um, so nobody, they're not confirmed. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see Tim at this point. Cause I think if we were, they would have announced it during the live stream he did. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fair. Also, Tom, if you want to help with your finger tapping, just grab one of these guys and just, uh, play around. It's a nice little fidget, <laughs> uh, fidget tool here. They're so you don't start tapping. Show. <laughs> I can That's too bad grab. that forest is behind you, that jungle, you know? Oh, we can't yeah. see it. It's it must be the green Draco Rex. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh, somebody somebody asked a while ago if we play COD, and I don't know why they asked that, but yes, we do. And we have we have played. We are sacrificing our COD time to do this we, right now. We were literally going to be playing this afternoon, but then this this all happened, so we're like, you know what? Let's let's take this time to live stream instead. Yeah. Um, um, I did want to. I wanted to throw it back to um, if I can find the comments. So Jeremy asked well he said i'm worried that the writing around bringing dodgson back into the spotlight might be too on the nose as to why what are your thoughts um and i think that that gets right into what we've just been saying which is if they're bringing him back there needs to be a reason for it mm -hmm. so obviously the character has motivation to come back he has wanted this technology this entire time it just needs to be justified in a way it makes sense and i think that him kidnapping potentially these dinosaurs now that they're out in the wild and using them for some ulterior motive makes a lot of sense um but that ulterior motive needs to be very well grounded for it to be effective in my opinion brad what do you think about that and it being two on the nose i don't i don't think so and i think with the idea that we came up with before i don't know if uh, jeremy was there or not but i feel like that idea it doesn't sound contrived or weird or forced or anything it feels pretty natural to show that you know, like he tried, he tried to get this all to work, but it failed. And then now's the chance. Now's the opportunity because, you know, things are out there in the wild. Um, I don't think it would be forced at all or anything like that. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, equally, you could see other characters starting to come out of the woodwork as well. Um, I, j I just think it all depends on how much they do. I have to admit, I, I really hope that that Telltale game is recanonized. I just think that so much of it would make sense in the confines of the story. I, I sure. do you not agree. <laughs> so there, there would be there would be a lot that would that would be decent. Like it would be good. It, w it wouldn't really help all that much. But um, you couldn't necessarily recanonize the entire thing straight off just based off the um, the the fact that the visitor center was kind of you know exploded there in the front uh, by a T Rex. Yeah. But um, you know that kind of nullifies the entire thing right there um but i do like the option to pick and choose to say like oh well it may be you know the, the, the portions of this did happen it was just a retelling of it i guess if you want to say which I, i'm not i'm not a huge fact the fan of like well their point of view was was not accurate oh, come on come on they're trying to tell us what's happening it has to be accurate um, no, yeah, I get that. So, see, I think in that regard, like maybe you just have little nods to subtle moments where these interactions have happened. Mm -hmm. So, maybe I don't know whether they could do it through the viral marketing. Maybe a Biosyn website pops up, but we get a timeline that's behind <clears throat> locked doors in the back door that shows all of their different attempts to get this technology. So, mm -hmm. you could literally just have something as simple as 1993 botched mission to Isla Nublar helicopter team not recovered or something like that so then anyone who sees yeah. that instantly think oh, okay that's jurassic park um yeah. but it doesn't kind of confirm all of the events as they unfolded look i'm trying I'm, I'm getting too sidetracked by everybody in the comments here uh aaron's just wants us to shut this down again i don't even know why anymore and and siaka thinks that i'm advocating for soft cannon which i'm I'm advocating for things that have maybe been considered soft cannon, but not soft cannon itself. Um, but uh, oof, what was I going to say? I don't even remember. Um, the telltale stuff. That average five. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so no, you were saying uh, the finding out about these past, uh, past occurrences or events. Um, yeah, I guess you could technically you could have like a couple of people that we were familiar with maybe track down some information, but it's just like one of those convenient plot points where it's like I'm sifting through one. I, I like just so happened to look in the right cabinet and then I looked in there and there's a folder that has all the, the information that I need yeah. to solve the day. And it's like, oh, they're the guys that have been, you know, our, our struggles this entire time. The reason that I have PTSD from visiting an island when I should have had the most amazing trip of my life or something like that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Hi, Shannon. That's I saw why you said I... my name. Um, and James is here. What's up, James? <laughs> Actually, he just... Oh, no, he just I said think, Thomas. He, he doesn't care about me. He just he just says Thomas. Yeah. Um, I think that's why, especially when it comes to like viral marketing, it could be quite interesting to explore a lot more of Biosyn. Because mm -hmm. obviously that was what um, 
we got with Mizrani Corp, it kind of fleshed out all of that background. So maybe if it's something that we can't get on screen, we get it in that format where we kind of get to see what yeah. science they've been attempting at what different points. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, I just wish more stuff would be canonized within the film so we actually know yeah. they, they actually tell us these things or show us these things um, instead of having to infer, you know, what happened based off of a, a few written lines. But yeah, um, I I don't know why James just said tracking beacon. I don't know what, what's up, man. Tracking beacon. He didn't he say mine. Oh, there he says my name. He was suggesting there's a tracking beacon in the Barbasol can, like we said earlier. What did he just start from the beginning, man? Catch up, man. Um. <laughs> um, so, in terms of that kind of background story, then, would you be open to it being explored in another format? Because I said earlier, if you were going to do a novel around Biosyn, mm -hmm. you could type to it Jurassic World Trial and Error and have a really interesting science novel. Would that yeah. be a format that you'd be open to them doing? Oh, definitely. Look, I mean, I loved, I love the evolution of Claire. I think it has its faults and stuff, but I think overall it was a good addition to the canon. Uh, but um, not necessarily. It's kind of all over the place sometimes. But I, I like that and I appreciate that attempt. And I think that would be great if they did have you know, maybe maybe your title or just, you know, if they want to continue on with the evolution of Lewis Dodgson or some or the evolution of Biosyn. And you're just like telling the story about Biosyn or maybe it's like, honestly, you know, I could see one of those like uh, manuals like they release those Jurassic World. Um, yeah, whatever. You probably know what I'm talking about, like those manual things that have employee like employee manual. That yeah, employee did. thing, the employee yeah. handbook or whatever. So if they did like a Biosyn employee handbook that had all this kind of information released, sure, we could consider talking about it. But officially, we'd I'd never say like, uh, well, you know, in the employee handbook, uh, you know, that was a thing. But yeah, no, yeah, I get that. I just yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll kind of just end up going around in circles with it, but I think there's <laughs> lots of story to explore. There is a massive window of time between 93 and 2020, so there is lots of interesting stuff that they could do, yeah. um, and I'm just praying that we get the character from the novel, because I think that would be a refreshing change in terms of human characters. Yeah, I mean, I'd be down for it. Um, you, you talked about him being evil and, and kind of doing those things, but yeah, he does sound... When you describe it that way, it kind of does sound a little bit like Mills. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how you differentiate it. I mean, I, I look at this guy, and if he's the C if they're making a point to say he's the CEO, um, what did it say? The CEO of Biosyn Genetics, but only yeah. time will tell whether the character proves to be the three equals big villain. Like, that is just that thing that, like, I feel like you see that in a lot of movies. Like, um, uh, like Cars 3. Or or car even cars <laughs> no even cars too why don't we just analyze this based off the of cars movies um there there's like always a character that's introduced that you're like oh this is a good guy and then flips around and you're like oh no he's a bad guy um or there was another movie oh um uh, in Incredibles well, we'll just go with Pixar movies maybe Incredibles <laughs> two Bob Odenkirk is in Incredibles two and he plays a guy that was. <laughs> So I could see him being this guy, though. Like, he's a guy that, I, I mean, if they do our flashbacks in the beginning, it wouldn't necessarily work the same way. But I could see them introducing him. But all I'm doing is describing Mills again. Like, they introduce Mills as if he's, yeah. like, a good guy. Like, he's a believable guy. But in the back of your head, you you know he's not a good guy. And I, who yeah. who was it? Wait, I just had this. Oh, it was uh, I was in it was in this episode uh, that's out this week um, with Ryan Donahoe from the Forcecast. He was saying that in the trailers, you know, Claire throws the sand and she said, "This is all a lie," and and uh, or everything was a lie or whatever she says. And and then they show you know Mills, and you're like, "Oh, okay, everything's a lie." So despite whatever happens here, I'm sure they'll give it away in the trailers. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You know? I do think I think you have a good point though, because obviously, so um, the casting call for it that Jurassic Outpost put out was described as like oh, it was Steve Jobs like, so inspiring, which again suggests that he is going to be a character yeah. who's presented as quite likable. Yeah. But on the flip side, so um, earlier somebody was saying that one of the actresses who's been cast traditionally plays a bad guy. So maybe they're going to completely subvert our expectations and he's actually going to be a good guy in this film. But then I'm like, well, if you do that, how do you go from him wanting to be 
you know, wanting to steal the technology to suddenly being this good guy, it would like, you know, it wouldn't really make much sense. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> Have him be a good guy after trying to take down Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't make any it's sense. Like, but... I went to Jurassic World with my family at six, and now I yeah. wanted to survive. <laughs> there were yeah okay so the actress i think you're talking about is deachin lockman um she yeah. i feel like she's always somebody that's kind of played like a villain um she was on she agents, was of, shield and stuff. agents of shield yeah yeah, yeah. so uh and she did that same exact kind of role where she kind of yep. you know switched uh, you know so we have her we have um dewanda wise mamudo athi as far as i've heard that they're going to maybe be a couple of those two <laughs> scott hayes he just looks like a bad guy. I don't know. Um, and yeah. then obviously all these returning people and, uh, and then just uh, Campbell Scott here. So there's two, there's Scott Hayes and Campbell Scott. I don't know. There's a lot of Scots here. Um, it feels but... like that. I kind of, so looking at Scott as well, especially you could picture him being like, kind of like a corporate villain. Um, so I definitely feel like there's going to be some kind of high level company clash going on for some reason. Yeah. I just, I can't for the life of me picture a reason why we would go from one main antagonist to three, which is what that would potentially be. So. Well, who knows? Even more, potentially more. If you, if you consider Dr. Wu, you have Dr. Wu, like does this take away from Dr. Wu because he, you know, he could be considered evil throughout this entire thing, depending on what dots they connect in this movie. But, um, you know, does it take away from his his role? Or, I, I don't know. I think it kind of does. I hope they give him a good send-off, despite us wanting this guy to return to this franchise from the very beginning. Like, um, I don't know. It could, be, it could be a lot to handle. And I actually said this on Twitter. I said, like, you know, this guy, uh, Campbell Scott... Yeah, that's right. Campbell Scott was announced as Dodgson, and I'm like, oh no, this movie is just there's you've got all the 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 two Jurassic World mains, you've got other Jurassic World returning cast members, you've got all these people from Jurassic Park returning, um, people from Fallen Kingdom returning, and then uh, like six new people as well. And you want to maybe try to squeeze this thing out by next June? That just seems like a lot. Push this movie, man. Push this movie. Yeah, I don't want. I, I don't agree. want characters like like Doctor Wu or Barry uh, or you know um, Jake Johnson uh, as Lowry. I don't want these people to be pushed aside too much because they have to focus on a lot of other issues. So there's a lot going on in this movie, and it kind of makes me nervous that they haven't said, "Hey guys, we're gonna push this to 2022." Just just make the safe call. Push the movie. It doesn't matter. You'll be fine. Yeah. I agree so much, especially when if if it gets to the point where you are grounding this film in the past, which is exactly what this announcement does, Mm -hmm. you are going to have the nostalgia for every single fan of the classic film now depending on this being a good film so you want to give it the amount of time you, oh my god yeah you want to give it the amount of time you can for it to blossom and i really need to find a snuck squad figure he's <laughs> <laughs> gonna hold something all i hear is yeah. boop 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 <laughs> james here says imagine a flashback in 93 and it's like some epic chase scene involving the rex and the rex roars while we hear grant it uh, is with the kids at night when Lex says, are you hearing this? Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. Like that are you yeah. hearing this moment turned out to be, you know, a flashback moment from this movie. That That's pretty cool. I like that idea. I don't know how you would connect those dots per se, but you could just kind of in your mind be like, oh, maybe that was the moment when, you know, when all of this happened. I kind of like that. I think it's uh, interesting. I kind of... I I don't want it to be overused flashbacks for the sake of flashbacks, though. So mm. I am going to say something very controversial. I would actually rather we the park purely because I don't feel like they would make much sense um, when it comes to Dodgson's character. You know, Nedry was his person on the park. 
that would have been lived through Nedry. So unless it turns out that actually he had somebody else working there as a contingency plan that we don't know, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily make much time make much sense to spend time with those classic characters. But I could be wrong, and it could turn out that Jerry Harding was on his payroll. So we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Oh god, you imagine that? Jerry Harding is the yeah. guy. He's... No. I I um I I look at Dodgson and I think you know, at that table, that cafe in uh wherever that was. Um I, I could see him looking at at Nedry and being like, is he going is he going to pull this off? Is he going to actually do this? Um and it's 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 all interesting because like he's not even expecting the storm and and all the chaos that goes down. Essentially, Dodge uh, uh, Nedry should be able to complete the task fine. But I do like the idea of a contingency plan. It does really work in my mind, I, and I and it kind of it works story wise for me because I don't feel like he would trust Nedry to to complete the task. Um, but it, I feel like it would be difficult to get a no, random okay. a random person on the island. Um, without turning another in another employee, which I don't think is, uh, I, and honestly, that other employee is Doctor Wu. Like, turn he's turned Doctor Wu. Doctor Wu is part of it, you know, because obviously the the license licensing contingency and all this other stuff was probably, uh, you know, not gonna work overall. But I think this park would have fallen no matter what, and maybe Doctor Wu was that backup guy. So maybe that would that would be mind blowing too if you get a de-aged if you get a de-aged Doctor Wu walking up you don't see who it is until like he he walks up he pulls the canister out he's checking it out and then then the camera pans up to his face and you're like oh my god it's it's him he was he was a secret agent this whole time and i think that would pay off pretty well for me um you know he does I... he does leave the island at some point but um maybe he didn't maybe he was still there do you know what? Thinking about it, Brad, you may have just solved how you ground it in the classic films as well. Um, because thinking about it, JP3. He's not moving. Where'd he go? Oh, no, he's Some gone. Kind of oh, oh, he's back. He's back. Oh, there, go ahead. Start, o start over. You you disappeared for a second. <laughs> you were just like, okay. yeah, I'm talking. I think my internet's dropping out. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Obviously, we know that in JP3, he had an Ankylosaurus, Spinosaurus, Carifosaurus, and the other one that I've forgotten, um, mm. Ceratosaurus. Yeah. So um, at that point, the Lost World incident has happened. InGen is absolutely hemorrhaging financially. Where is he getting the funding to do that experimentation? What if that wasn't InGen money that funded that in the first place? And then leading into Jurassic World, you see that Masrani has absolutely no clue what Wu is doing. Um, in that little hybrid room where he's got the Stegoceratops, Masrani mm. has got no idea that that room exists. So what if that has been funded by somebody else as well? Because Masrani has no clue. He doesn't know the work that Wu's doing, and he openly says that. Um, so... Yeah. There is potential scope for him to have actually had that connection with these other people a lot longer, um, which I think could be quite interesting. Yeah, I I think Aaron, you're you're really upsetting Aaron this whole time again. <laughs> with he's like JP three. Um, yeah, I mean I don't know if they necessarily need to kind of cover that ground. Um, if anything, that kind of information would probably be on uh you know viral marketing of some sort but um <laughs> but i i don't necessarily know if they need to go that route but i think um you know what did we say before so they they get the canister you're kind of blown away at that moment when it's dr Wu. you get the canister out to biosyn they do all their testings they've got their fill oh my god my son just walked in my room and scared the life out of me so i am live streaming right now buddy <laughs> you want to come you want to come be on on the video come here come here don't touch anything because you're going to knock down my entire setup <laughs> hey dude <laughs> <laughs> okay so what do you think about jurassic park so Link, huh? what is your theory on dodgson he can't hear you whatsoever <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think? What do you think about Dodgson? What do you think about Dodgson, Link? <laughs> what do you think? Is my voice funny? Yeah. Is it, good, is it a good <laughs> casting, do you think? Or 
You gonna say? You gonna talk? You gonna say anything? No. Oh, he. Just, I don't know what's happening here, but <laughs> you want the headphones back on? <laughs> no, like... he was in the sound of my voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does not like my voice. <laughs> He's like, Tom, Tom, stop with the, the theories about JP3 and the motion comics. It's oh my just god, too much. Aaron really came to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you step over this without knocking over my green screen? Can you, can you do it? Okay, ready? Ready? Tom, you should, I feel like you should like continue the conversation. <laughs> Enjoy this, you know? Um, so, yeah, so. I mean, definitely it could be a bit kind of extreme to try and tie it all together. Uh -huh. But I just feel like there's, I don't know, I really like that idea of Wu actually, because there's a lot that you yeah. could do to tie it into other things. Even if you were to, oh, dude, dude, imagine that, that like in Dominion, okay. we just get told that it's been Wu this whole time. And yeah. then after Dominion, evolution of Wu gets announced. I would like that. exploring how that's been different that entire time and how his character has actually been playing it this entire time. <laughs> that could be really cool. I I would like it. I would definitely like. Oh, here, uh, let me see. So, you guys, we are doing uh, giveaways. My son is bringing me uh, giveaway items here. Tom, you actually sent this one over. So he he brought oh, yeah. me this one. It just so <laughs> happened that you. You sent this one uh, our way. So we're going to be doing giveaways for Color of Change if you go and donate uh, on JurassicParkPodcast.com. So go donate some money. Uh, $5 or more will get you the chance to win a bunch of – and he brought the other one that you picked. I don't know why he brought these ones that you picked. Is he <laughs> so, psychic? I think he is. This is hilarious because there's a table behind my green screen that has a load of giveaways on it. Um, so if you want some giveaway stuff, we've got a bunch of prize packs. I don't even have the other uh, prize packs up there just yet, but we've so got guys, even more. This is a physical representation of the key principle of Dodgson's character, which is sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So I guess I should probably get going. We've been doing this for like uh, over an hour now anyway. And I think we covered. Oh, no, he's hitting. He's hitting my green screen. Stop. No, don't. No, no, stop. Stop! It's gonna fall down. The, stop! The man! Stop the man behind the curtain! Stop it! All right. Uh, <laughs> you? What are you doing? All right. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> where's my back right here? All right. I'm gonna to to cue up the music here, and we'll drown ourselves out. Tom, uh, where can people find you online? So you can find me Getting at pushed. Tom Jurassic on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Awesome. Uh, and like I said, go to JurassicParkPodcast.com. You can find the uh, the link up on the top uh, that you put together for uh, Stay Safe, Stay Jurassic. But also on the side yeah. of the page, you'll see Jurassic Gives Back. We're, we're trying to give back uh, to Color of Change. So if you donate money, $5 or more will get you a, uh, a chance to win a prize pack. $10 or more will get you the chance uh, to come on the podcast with myself and Aaron. So if you want to trash talk Aaron a little bit on his, some of his theories, you can donate $10 or more to have the chance to do that. So thank I'm you guys. I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, you're not entered into win. Uh, but uh, you can come on some other time. Um, you're the only guest who have ever appeared on the, on the Jurassic Wire. Uh, you and whoever we, uh, we have for the, uh, the winner here. But thank you, Tom, for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed our chat on uh, Lewis Dodgson and uh, Campbell Scott. So it's been fun. Thank you, guys. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Take it easy.